Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the RST Pro Series Ambush Textile Jacket. Bikes and the military have gone together for decades and there's a real combat feel to this new for 2022 jacket from RST. You get webbing straps, there's mesh stowing pouches, there are stick-on insignia and it's got more pockets than a snooker table factory. So if you want to carry plenty of stuff and you also fancy the challenge of remembering what you've put where, then the ambush jacket could be right up your strata. The outer shell is made from HTC, which is RST's own high tenacity nylon. It gives good abrasion resistance and tear resistance without giving the slightly shiny look that you get from polyester. It's overlaid with reinforcements of ballistic, so that is a polyester, but it's very, very dense stuff that's beefed up to give protection against abrasion cuts and tears. You'll find that on the shoulders and also from the elbows to the wrists. The waterproof membrane for this jacket is a drop liner that's sat behind the outer shell and it's a Senaqua Pro membrane. RST say that's twice as breathable as the regular Senaqua membrane and that it also resists 50% more water. So where the regular membrane has a 10,000 mm static head, the Pro version has a 15,000 mm and that's tested by subjecting the membrane to a column of water and seeing whether it gets through. So this membrane can withstand a 15 metre column of water where the regular one only withstands a 10 metre column of water. The outer of the jacket is also treated to repel water on initial contact and that's really handy when you've got a drop liner like this as it helps the jacket stay drier. The thing with that coating, it's called DWR or durable water repellency, is that it wears off over time and it needs restoring every so often. If you want to test that, you spray some water on the jacket and if it still beads up, your coating's still in place. But if it doesn't bead up, you need to get some spray and retreat it. So there are plenty of vents as well on the ambush jacket. You get two at the collarbones, two at the biceps and the waist, and then there's one on each side of the back. But don't expect a huge whirlwind of air to come rushing in. The membrane, the waterproof membrane, is between the outside and your skin, so that'll act as a barrier. The jacket will cool down in general, and I wore this on some pretty hot days without it being a problem, but you won't feel air rushing in like you would if the liner was removable or if it was laminated to the outer shell. The main fastener is a chunky zip up the middle and then a storm flap secures over the top with Velcro and poppers. Now I'm a bit too lazy to do up five pop studs before every ride, but the Velcro alone kept it shut without any dramas in my experience. The collar fastens with Velcro and there's also a reverse pop stud that lets you peel that collar back to give you more room around your throat. If you want a tighter seal around the neck, you get two Velcro belt adjusters that you can use to pull it in a little bit tighter. The cuff fasteners won't take long for me to explain at all. You undo the Velcro patch feed the sleeve over your glove, and then you do the Velcro patch up again. I found there was plenty of room to get gloves in there, even quite chunky winter gloves with a good sized cuff on them. There's a good range of fit adjustment on the ambush jacket as well. You get belts on the biceps and poppers at the cuffs to give some flexibility there, as well as belts at the waist and then expansion pleats at the hips. So pockets are normally a quick run through on textile jackets, but this might make up the bulk of the video actually, as there are 10 exterior pockets on this one and the only challenge you'll have is remembering what you've put where. You get four on the front of the torso, one at the top of the upper arm, and then one at the base of each sleeve. There's the mat pocket on the lower spine, like you get on loads of jackets, and this one can be taken off and used as a separate bum bag. Then pockets nine and 10 are the two mesh pockets at either hip, just here. The idea with these is you get somewhere to stash your gloves at the end of a ride. And there's also sort of an 11th pocket, which is the stash on the back for a hydration pouch. You pop your water bladder in the pocket at the upper back, feed the tube out and through loops on the front, and then that gives you easy access to drinking water. And there's more with this jacket as well. The RST logo and the Union flag are both on Velcro patches. So if you're feeling particularly patriotic, you can take the flag off your arm and put it on your chest instead. So these are called morale patches. If you have a quick look on eBay, you'll see this opens up a whole world of witticisms that you can have stuck to you while you ride. Finally, I think if 10 pockets aren't enough, there's the option to strap even more stuff to yourself. These on the front here are molar straps and you can attach a wide range of things to these, including a small storage pouch that RST sell as a separate accessory. And then there's a loop on the left chest pocket, which personally seems a bit pointless, but I'm sure some riders will find a use for that. So moving to the inside of this jacket, there's a removable full sleeve thermal liner. It's rated at 150 grams per square meter, which is the lightest of the liners RST offer across their range. So I wouldn't expect full winter insulation from that alone. There is an impressive set of armor though. You get a complete set that all meets the higher level two of the CE safety standard. So that's shoulder, elbow, back and chest armor that's all to the most protective level. So that's a real positive about this jacket. And while we're on the subject of safety performance, the ambush meets the middle level within the latest CE standard, and that's AA. So pockets on the inside are a little thin on the ground, especially compared to what you get on the outside. You get two, 
and the chest armor means they have to sit quite low down in the jacket. RST lists the jacket as having four internal pockets, so I think they must reckon there's room to put stuff in with the chest armor. There probably is, as long as it's not something too chunky, you could probably get a phone in there. Bear in mind also that the pockets on the inside are the only ones that are inside the waterproof membrane, so anything you need to keep dry is going to have to be in those pockets rather than in the pockets on the outside of the jacket. The last bit to point out is the full length connection zip that you get to attach this to RST trousers. There are matching ambush trousers with a similar construction, the same CE standards, and they also have CE level 2 armour for the hips and knees. They're £229.99 a pair, so match them with this jacket, which is £299.99, and that combo is 530 quid. So this is actually a tour inspect jacket, they're saying more adventure riders rather than people who've got the FZ1 phaser that I rode while I was wearing this jacket. But I found that no one arrested me for wearing kit that wasn't perfectly matched to my bike and I actually found it pretty comfortable and flexible. It was quite warm out on the days that I wore this jacket and I was surprised by how well it kept me cool. Adventure riders who are serious about stints of off-roading will want something where the waterproof liner will come out, I would say and those who expect to be in long spells of heavy, persistent rain, then it's worth considering the extra outlay for a laminated membrane because it will shed water more effectively. But for general riding, there's nothing wrong with the drop liner for your waterproofing, especially if you make sure that DWR coating that I mentioned earlier stays active. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the RST Pro Series Ambush Textile Jacket. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.